Herb, what do you say? Uh, is, is the market uh, smoking a little too much, as our friend uh, Brian Sullivan would say, hopium? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's, 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 I always just, it's sort of simple. It's common sense. Too far, too fast is no good. And that's the way I can see it from this market's perspective. Everybody's got their charts. Everybody's got their wheels. Everybody's got their opinions. And you can look at either side and they all make compelling sense. We know that right now there are people saying, you know, we're off to a start, a great start. Interest rates aren't going to go much higher. But then we also know the earnings are coming out this week. And this is a market with zero conviction. The Fed is going to come out and that they may fool everybody. Um, and this market just has a mind of its own right now. And I think it needed this big breather, right? This big upside breather. But we've seen this before. And I think right now, um, I come back to zero conviction. Uh, and, uh, you know, as goes January, so goes the year. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but 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 there is. You say there's zero conviction, but there is a kind of conviction, is there not, that maybe the worst of the inflation uh, moment is behind us. Whether that turns out to be correct or not, I'm just saying there seems to be a, a general consensus sure. that that's the case, and that uh, we are in the later innings of a rate tightening cycle, and there seems to be at least I would call, if not conviction, consensus yeah. that that's the case. Yeah, I, look, Tom Lee has this great chart. He says this is 1982. It's a compelling chart, and Tom may be right. I, I wouldn't bet against him. But I just know that from here to there, there are a lot of fits and starts. Mm -hmm. And this, we're not off to the races, Tyler. I can't believe mm -hmm. we're off to the races. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're into a period where you, need, you, know, you, you have digestion. You need a little more digestion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people still need to understand there's risk involved in this market. Uh, so many different stocks we could talk about, Herb. Um, you know, yeah. I, you like Sherwin Williams here. You like NVR. There's a weird. There should be like a fan club of people who like NVR because it's, it's such. Uh, NVR is such. A, look, I, I write two newsletters, and these newsletters are totally the most boring companies. One is big <laughs> stocks. One is little stocks. They're made for me, right? And I love the fact that they are the counter meme companies. These are companies that. We're left for dead. No one cared about. They're not exciting. But you get a company like NVR, which is a housing company, probably the single best run housing company out there that no one talks about for the most part because the company itself doesn't talk about it. Right. Sherwin-Williams. It's like watching paint dry because <laughs> it, it, it's a great company. It's an extraordinarily well-run business. That doesn't get people excited. I have little companies. My, I have this, this company called Hub Group. You ever heard of Hub Group? You've never heard of Hub Group. Hub Group is the second fiddle to J.B. Hunt. It's a trucking company with an intermodal component. It trades at, what, a fraction of what J.B. Uh, Hunt trades for. Those are the companies that are out there. There are thousands of, no, there are thousands of companies. There are many companies that are great companies that people discover. Every Holdings. Every Holdings is like a fintech play on the casino industry. The company spends an enormous amount of time paying attention to itself. It has great cash flow. It's reinvesting in itself. It has a games component. No one talks about it. One of the most speculative stocks I like is yeah. a company called Triumph so, Financial. I'm just, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah. so, so I, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to divulge the, the formula of your Coca-Cola, but how do you <laughs> bubble up companies like that? What are the one or two metrics that cause you to find a Sherwin-Williams, a hub group? What are you looking for on your screens or in your research that leads you to those? I have a screening process I use to screen out companies, and that's the first thing I do. And what I'm looking for, especially for the smaller names, I'm looking for, it's, it makes, I mean, we're looking for free cash flow yield. We're looking for companies with strong free cash flow, <laughs> with strong balance sheets, that rank high in the quintiles of the database we're using, so they rank higher than others. And that way, at least we can get a head start on finding companies that we think will do better over the next year. So it's, and in theory, our portfolio is two to five years, so, you know, over a longer period of time. The, the, the important thing you just said to me is it's as much about eliminating the lose, the bad ones yes. as it is about finding the good ones. You, you eliminate... Gotta, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you got to screen out the bad ones. You eliminate the 80% or the 90% or whatever percent it is that don't make it, and then you can drill down and concentrate on the 5, 10, 15% that do. Herb Greenberg, always good, insightful to hear from you. Thank you. Great seeing you, Tyler and, and Kelly. And you